This video will be an all-inclusive, completely comprehensive beginner's guide to Forex trading. If you're someone who's just starting out in Forex trading, then this will give you everything you need to know to understand the basics of Forex and take that next step down your path to becoming a profitable trader. If you're someone who's already trading, then chances are you probably skipped these steps, right? And that's a damn shame because if you skipped these steps, then it's gonna be nearly impossible for you to become a profitable trader without the things I'm gonna show you in this lesson. So whether you're beginning your Forex trading career or someone who's already been trading, let's make sure that you have a solid foundation with today's video on the basics of Forex. So with that being said, I'm gonna let the intro and disclaimer roll while I do hit that subscribe button, hit that like button for me. Go ahead and follow us over on Instagram at The Trading Channel. And I'll be right back to share with you the most comprehensive beginner's guide to Forex on YouTube. See you in a second. What's up and welcome to the complete beginner Forex training course. In this course, you'll learn everything you need to know to begin your journey as a Forex trader. The first question we're gonna ask is the most simple question possible, which is, what is Forex? So Forex is actually the largest market in the world. And what does that mean? How big do you have to be to be the largest market in the world? Well, on an average trading day, the Forex market trades five trillion with a t dollars that is a large amount of movement for one trading day five trillion dollars that's insane so that's why the forex market is the largest market in the world now another thing you need to realize about the forex market and the second thing we're going to go over is that in the forex market what you're trading is called a currency pair a currency pair is nothing more than the exchange rate between two currency we, currencies. We've all had to exchange money before if you've traveled at least. Maybe you haven't, but if you've traveled outside of the country you live in, you've probably exchanged money for another currency. For instance, if you live in the United States and you take a trip to Europe, then you more than likely will exchange some of your U.S. dollars for European dollars. And that rate, the rate of exchange, is what you'll get back. For instance, right now, the euro dollar exchange rate is 1.0878. So let's just write this down. The euro against the dollar right now, or the euro dollar exchange rate, is 1.0878. So that means that if you were to go to Europe right now and you wanted to get one euro, then you would have to give them $1.0878 to get that one euro. Because right now, one euro is worth $1.0878. Now, the way we make money in the Forex market, remember we're trading based on the exchange rate between two different currencies, and the way you actually make money is when this exchange rate rises and falls. So these exchange rates fluctuate depending on the strength and valuation of each of these currencies, the euro and the dollar. So if the euro rises in value, then it's gonna take more dollars for you to get one euro. The same thing if the dollar, so let's say the euro goes up in value, let's just start here. The euro goes up in value, then you're gonna need more than $1.0878 to get one euro. And if the dollar goes down in value, it's the same thing. And the opposite is true if the opposite happens. If the euro drops, then you're going to need less dollars in order to get one euro. And if the dollar rises in value, then you're gonna need less dollars to get one euro. So let's do an example of that right now. What you're actually making money on in the Forex market and what you're trading based on is this exchange, this exchange rate fluctuating in value, going up and going down. So if this exchange rate goes from 1.0878 Let's say you buy, you put in a buy order. We're gonna go over all of this later on, so don't get confused yet. But if you put in a buy order at 1.0878, and this exchange rate goes to 1.0978, then you make the difference. You make the profit of essentially one cent, but we are trading based on huge amounts of size in the Forex market and with leverage, which we're gonna discuss later on. Right now, what you need to understand after the question of what is Forex, 
is what is a currency pair and that's what we're gonna break into right now now that you know what the Forex market is and kind of how it how it works let's break into breaking down a currency pair and give you a complete understanding of what a currency pair is Let's do that right now a currency pair if you look on the chart in front of you it's what you see to the far red edge I will actually make this a little bit bigger so you can see it as you can see on the side here we have euro versus dollar pound versus dollar dollar versus yen Aussie versus dollar and dollar versus Swiss those are the major currency pairs the top five major currency pairs now with that being the case each of these is made up of separate currencies right so the first thing you need to understand is what each three letter symbol represents which currency so for each three letter symbol we have that represents a certain currency and I'll post a screenshot of which currencies are represented by which three letter symbol right now you'll see that on the screen so with that being the case we have one currency's value against another currency's value which is what gives us a better interpretation of the value of a specific currency so in the case of the euro dollar let's say this is a currency pair that we can trade it's actually the most popular currency pair in the forex market and the euro dollar if we write it out here consists of two currencies right these two currencies are called the base currency and the quote currency now don't let this sound too confusing there's nothing confusing about a currency pair the only thing you need to know about a currency pair is that currently the euro dollar has a value of 1.0792 so the fact that the euro dollar has a value of 1.0792 is important because you need to understand that that is the quote pair valuation so what that means is every base pair as in the first pair and this being the second pair every first pair in a currency pair always has a value equal to one you are always exchanging one of that first pair for whatever the quote pair is the quote pair is the actually quote the actual quote you see on the screen is your quote pair so you're getting one euro what this means in hindsight is that if I have one euro I essentially have one dollar seven cents point nine two or another way to look at this is it, it takes one point oh seven nine two dollars to make one euro so therefore the value of the euro is higher than the value of the dollar by roughly eight cents seven nine two cents so let's look at one more pair and try to go over this one more time to make sure that you're getting it and I'll ask you some questions while I do this to help you to better learn because asking questions and having you answer them is a much better way for you to learn than for me to just write shit down right so let's do that let's go for the dollar yen right now okay so the USD slash JPY is the dollar yen with the dollar yen which one of these pairs is a base pair is it the dollar or the yen hopefully you said the dollar right because the first pair the dollar is the first pair in the equation the yen would be the second pair in the pair in the currency pair so with the dollar being the first pair that means it is the base currency of this currency pair with it being the base currency of this pair what's its value always equal to one when you're looking at the valuation of a currency this value is always going to be equal to one the JPY is what it's called the quote pair so if it's the quote pair then that means whatever the value of the dollar yen is and it's on the screen now it's one one oh point nine oh so if the yen let's say the dollar yen itself is one one oh point nine oh so it takes one dollar to have if you have one dollar essentially that means you have one hundred and ten point nine oh euro yen excuse me not euros yen so at this point we can see that one dollar is equal to one hundred and ten point nine oh euros or if you have one hundred and ten pint 110.90 yen not euros I keep doing that if you have 110.90 yen then you essentially have one dollar and vice versa so this is a currency pair and this is how you're always going to look at it the first pair is always the base pair with a value of one the quote pair is what you're seeing as a quote that's what the value of the second currency is compared to the first currency 
The quote pair is always the value compared to the first currency. The first currency is always the, va the currency being compared to, and it always equals one. So in this case, again, the dollar would be one. The yen means I need one dollar, and when I have one dollar, I essentially have 110.90 yen. So that was a look at what Forex is itself and also what is a currency pair in case you were struggling with that or didn't know or, or essentially in case you were coming into the market as a brand new trader and needed this lesson. I hope it was valuable for you. And I'll see you guys in the next lesson where we're going to talk about what a pip is and how you can actually count pips, tens of pips, hundreds of pips. How do you know where a currency pair actually sits in terms of the valuation? That's what we're going over in the next video and I can't wait to see you guys there. Talk to you soon. Next up in the all-inclusive beginner Forex trading course is what is a pip? We have to understand what a pip is because this, a pip, is how the Forex market moves. A pip is the smallest amount of movement we can see in a currency pair that actually matters to us whenever we're placing orders. A pip is how we make profit or get stopped out depending on how our trade goes. So it's very important that we understand what this is. Again, a pip is the smallest number that moves in a currency that we care about as traders. There's one number below this called a fractional pip that we're not even going to talk about other than me saying don't pay attention to it because it does not matter at all to us as traders. So what is a pip? We know that a pip is the smallest number that moves in a currency pair, but how do we identify a pip? Well, look at the euro dollar right now. Right now, you can see that the euro dollar last price is 107.87, 1.0787. So let's write that down. We have the euro dollar at a price of 107.87, 1.0787. Seven. And you can see on that currency as well that there is a smaller number as a fifth decimal, a smaller number that's two right now in red. That's a fractional pip. We're not going to worry about those at all. What you need to understand is that the way you identify a pip is the fourth place away from the decimal. So the fourth decimal point, meaning if this is the decimal point, we count over one, two, three, four. This is a pip. And let me clarify that really quickly. Right now, we are talking about a pip on every currency pair except currency pairs that end in JPY. Any currency pair with JPY in it is going to be slightly different than this, and we're going to go over that next. So this is going to be what is a pip, and I'm going to put non-JPY here so that no one's confused. This is a pip on every currency pair except yen pairs, which we're going to discuss what a pip is in a yen pair in just a second but for every other currency this is what you're going to use so this is what is a pip non jpy for every currency pair that doesn't have jpy in it the fourth decimal place is what is known as one pip so we have the euro dollar at a value of 1.0787 what if the euro dollar goes to 1.0786 how much have we dropped the euro dollars went down now but by how much? Well, the math here is pretty easy. If we went from seven to six on our fourth decimal, which is a pip, we dropped by one pip. And here's how I want you to look at this. This is the way I looked at it at the beginning and it really helped me to understand this a little more clearly. Not that it's a super complicated thing. Understanding this, if you watch this video a couple times, will be extremely easy. But the way I look at this is let's write out our value of the Euro dollar and space it out a little bit to give us a little bit of room. And that's what I'm really trying to do here. I want to give myself a little bit of room. So we have one decimal, zero, seven, eight, seven, right? So with this being the case, the way I look at this, if I, if I count my numbers, one, two, three, fourth decimal places a pip, I like to look at it like this. This is our ones, meaning every time this moves, it's gonna be one. This is our tens. Every time an eight goes up or down, in this specific case, that's gonna be tens. And this is our one hundreds. That makes it so easy to say, okay, if the Euro dollar went from 1.0787, what it's at right now, to 1.0797, how much did we move? Well, let's look down here at our chart where that's the, the tens. That column is the tens. That decimal point, number three, is the tens. So therefore, this went down. And actually, in this case, 
since we went up from eight to nine, hopefully you caught that before I did, then obviously that means that the Euro dollar went up 10 pips because it was in our third decimal point. Now, let's do one more number to make sure you understand this and we'll go through one more currency pair to really make sure you have a good grasp on this. This is the foundation of any trading career. So let's do 1.0887. Can you tell me at this point, how many pips did the Euro dollar rise? Well, let's look at our column or graph. We have our ones, the seven, it stayed the same. We have our tens, which was eight, it stayed the same. We have our one hundreds that was seven and is now eight. That means that the Euro dollar went up not by 10, but by 100 pips. So that's the way you recognize a pip. A pip is the fourth decimal place. It's the smallest amount of currency moves that we care about as traders. Let's do a completely different currency pair that is not a yen pair and go over one more. And again, just like in the last lesson, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions as we go through this. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions as we go through this. And I want you to actually answer those questions on the other end where you're sitting or standing, depending on whether or not you're trying to get exercise in. And now what we're going to do again is go over a different currency pair. Let's go over the Aussie New Zealand. Let's just pick a random pair. So AUD, NZD, I do my ends back. I'm slightly dyslexic. I literally just drew an N backwards because I cannot ever remember which way they go. And in my head, it's always backwards. So we have the Aussie New Zealand, right? The Aussie New Zealand has a current value of 1.0248. 1.0248. Four, eight. Tell me what would be the case, okay? Let's go over a scenario. If the Aussie New Zealand went from 1.0248 to 1.0348, how many pips did this currency pair move? I'll give you a second. Hopefully, you were able to say 100 pips. Let's draw out our table one more time to make this very easy. One decimal O, two, four, eight. Okay. Here we have our little table that I like to make. At this point, we have our ones, our one pip, which is the fourth decimal. Our tens, which is the third decimal. We'll write this out too. One, two, three, four decimals. We have our one hundreds, and the zero would be the one thousands. You don't really have to know that. That's kind of irrelevant unless we have some kind of super crazy market moves. But in this case of the Aussie New Zealand from 1.0248 to 1.0348, which currency, excuse me, which, stop my phone here, which one of these numbers changed? It wasn't our ones at all, was it? Our ones was an eight, it's still an eight. It wasn't our tens, it was a four, it's still a four. Was it our 100s? It was a two, it is a three. So therefore, this market moved 100 pips. Going from two to three would mean that we moved a total of one hundred pips here on the Aussie New Zealand. So in order to be absolutely sure that you understand all this, give yourself a little test, look at a currency pair and look at all the numbers on that pair's value and then ask yourself what would change, write down another random number below or above it, and what would change if price went from where it is now to that number that you wrote down. That's a great exercise to do here in this case. And remember, the way we're looking at this is our pip, our one pip, is the fourth decimal place away from the decimal, okay? So if we have our, just as a final review here on non-yen pairs, if we have the fourth decimal place here, this would be four, right? One, two, three, four after the decimal, this is one pip. This is the tens, this is the one hundreds. So if we move to 1.0258, then we have moved up 10 pips. That's how you need to be looking at it in terms of what a pip is and how it's valued. Now, we've just talked about every non-yen pair. Any pair that does not have JPY will be calculated like this and will be evaluated like this with four decimal places. Now, what about yen pairs? Something very slight changes on any pair with a letter JPY attached to it. So let's do an example of that right now. If we look at the value right now of the dollar yen, which is USD JPY. 
the dollar yen currently has a value of 110.90. With this being the case, and own only pairs with JPY attached to them, we go two decimal places instead of four. What do I mean by that? Let's actually draw the graph right now so that we can make this as easy as possible. We have one, one, oh, point, nine, oh. Okay, if we draw our same graph, this is what it looks like now. Now, our one pip is the second decimal place, so what do we have to do? We see our decimal right there. We go one, two. On the second decimal place is one pip, so this is our ones. What does that mean for the nine in this specific case? That means the nine is going to be our tens, and the zero is going to be our one hundreds. Okay, so with this in place, let's go ahead and ask ourselves a very familiar question. For this video, which is, if this market moved from 110.90 to 110.96, how many pips did it go up? If the market moved this amount, how many pips is that that this market just rose? Well, if we look at the ones, it goes from zero to six. Therefore, this market would have risen or rose not sure which one to use there by six pips. Let me turn this on silent, sorry guys. Okay, so now let's go over a couple of other examples. So instead of us rising by six pips, I want you to tell me how much we are rising in this case. Let's go with one, one, two point nine oh. If price of the dollar yen goes from 110.90 to 112.90, then how much has that value risen? How much has the price went up? This, my friends, would be 200 pips because this column that was zero is the hundreds column. So this would be a plus 200 on the dollar yen. Now to make sure that you understand yen pairs as well as you do the other every other currency pair, I'm gonna go over one more yen pair that doesn't have the dollar in it, just a completely different pair to make sure you're completely comprehending how to read pips. Let's go ahead and do that right now. And again, in this section, I'll be asking a lot of questions and I want you to try to answer them at home so that you get a better grasp of this before I answer them here, even if you have to pause the video. So let's go. That all rhymed, wow, that's pretty good. Let's go into another yen pair. Let's try out the pound yen. So GBP, JPY, and the value of this currency pair right now, if I find it on the chart, and I'll show you a screenshot of it somewhere, the value of the pound yen is 130.70. As you'll notice, because this pair has JPY in it, we only move two decimals from the decimal, right? So if we have 130.70, then decimal one would count as how many pips? This is our tens, remember? And then this, our second decimal, right? This is decimal two, is going to be one pip. So if this market and this, our zero on the 130, our zero is going to be 100 pips. So if this market goes to 133, seven oh what do we have how much of a move did we have in the pound yen we had a 300 pip move a plus 300 pip move if we go from 130.70 to 130.85 how many pips did we move we moved up 15 pips because 70 to 85 is 15. if we go to 130.70 two, how many pips did we move? Up two pips. And if we go from 130.70 to 129.70, how much did we go down? 100 pips. We went down 100 pips. So I hope that now you have a really good grasp of what a pip actually means and how to calculate a currency's value against another one. This is a very important foundational step to beginning your foreign currency trading career. So it's definitely necessary to have in the arsenal. And up next, we're gonna talk about what is the actual value for each pip
how to calculate order size, and a little bit about leverage. So I hope to see you there in the next video, or I will see you there in the next video, and I'll talk to you then. See you soon. Hey guys, just wanted to record this really quickly before we start the next video. For anyone who is trading with a brokerage that requires you to trade in either standard lots, mini lots, or micro lots, which you're going to learn about in just a second, then you're going to be required to watch this next portion of the video. For instance, if you trade with MT4 as your platform, for the most part, MT4 will only allow you to trade in either standard lots, mini lots, or micro lots, which you're going to learn about again in just a second. And if that's the case, then you definitely need to watch the first part of this video. But if you want to learn the way that I personally use risk management and calculate the value of a pip, which is what we're talking about in this video, then that's going to happen towards the end of the video. I'm going to go over the way I actually do it. My brokerage allows me to make trades, place positions based on a random lot size. It does not matter if it's 122,000 units, if it's 22,000 units, it doesn't matter. It's completely random and that's okay with my brokerage and with the platform that I use. For that reason, I personally calculate the value of a pip a little bit differently, but the first part of this video is definitely for you if you're using MT4 or a platform that requires you to trade based on a certain lot size, which is a lot of brokerages out there, which is why I wanted to record this video just for you. If you're someone who is more interested in learning exactly how I use what I use in order to calculate the value per pip, then I'll have a timestamp on the screen somewhere where you can go to that portion of the video and skip this first portion. But it would probably be beneficial to watch this first part anyway. I did want to clarify that though in the beginning. So now let's jump into how to calculate the value of a pip this next lesson. Talk soon. Welcome to lesson number three on the basics of Forex. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what you actually want in terms of trading, how to calculate profits and what you don't want in terms of trading, how to calculate your losses. And what I mean by this is what that's a terrible W. We're going to restart this whole thing. Just kidding. We are going to restart with that W though. What is the value of a pip so we know what the foreign exchange market is we know about currency pairs and we know what a pip is but what is the actual value of that pip to you in your trading because well you probably know this by now if a market moves up in pips if you buy and the market moves up in pips then you're going to make money if you sell and the market goes down in pips you're going to lose money but how do you calculate how much money that is this is a question i get all the time how do I calculate my wins and my losses in Forex? And today in this video, what I'm going to show you how to do is determine the value of a pip. So how do we do this? Well, for starters, the value of a pip depends highly on the amount of currency you're trading. What that means is the amount of units that you're trading. So in currency markets, we're trading a set of units. And these units normally come in four major lot sizes four major sizes. So if you're trading units of currency, the what you want to what you want to actually look at and I'm going to do a graph for this is the lot size in order to come up with the amount of value per pip, the amount of value each pip is worth, it depends on your trading lot size or the amount of units that you're trading. And those units again are broken down into most of the time it's actually three major types, but we're going to do a fourth just in case. The fourth one is one that's used very rarely, but you'll understand more about that in just a second. Don't get confused, nothing confusing about this. What we're gonna have in this column is the name of whatever lot size you're doing. What we're gonna have in this column is the size, and what we're gonna have in this column is the value per pip. So value PP, value per, per pip in this, in this last column. And this is going to be the case for every pair that ends in USD. It's going to be very similar. This is a generalization. Every pair in the, that ends in USD is going to be exactly to this scale. Other currency pairs are going to vary, but not by much. This is a generalization. This is a generalization, but other currency pairs are not going to vary that much from this table. The name of the first size that is very common is a standard lot. So we're going to label this S 
L, that stands for a standard lot. Now, if you're trading a standard lot, that means you're trading 100,000 units of currency. So if we're trading 100,000 units of currency on any pair that ends in USD, then this is the exact value per pip. If you have one standard lot that you're trading, or if you're trading every 100,000 units you're trading, you are trading at a value of $10 per pip. So if you're trading a standard lot on the Euro dollar, that means that every pip is $10. Every pip that it moves is $10. Let's go through the rest of the types of or size of units that you can do first, and then we'll break into more about what they mean and how you can utilize them. The second one is called a mini lot. A mini lot means that you're controlling or holding 10,000 units of a certain currency. And with this being the case, with 10,000 units of a currency, you have a value per pip of $1. So for every 10,000 units of a currency that you hold, there is a value of $1 per pip. That's exactly right on dollar pairs. It's a generalization that is very similar on other pairs as well. And the last lot we're gonna take a look at is the micro lot. The micro lot means you're controlling 1,000 units of a certain currency, and that means that you are losing or gaining 10 cents per pip. So every pip that the market moves is going to be 10 cents up or down in your account if you're trading a micro lot. And the last one that we're gonna take a look at that we're not gonna dive deep into at all is called a nano lot. A nano lot means that you're controlling 100 units of currency and every movement of a pip is worth a penny. The value per pip is a penny, which is something that we're not even gonna worry about. So. In the case of the other lots, let's now break into, let's, dot, let's get away from this little section here. And what we're gonna do is break into looking at the difference in prices between currency pairs and figuring out how much we gained or lost based on that difference in price. So for instance, if you bought the Euro dollar, you are at 1.0802 and it went to 1.0802. 902 if you were trading a standard lot and this happened how much would you gain on that position how much money is that actually worth and that's what we're going to determine and talk about up next so let's go ahead and do that all right so let's move into this on the euro dollar trade here if we have the euro dollar at 1.0802 we trade one standard lot a hundred thousand units of this currency and we do so at 1.0802 and this market moves to 1.0902 going up we bought we wanted the market to go up and we take profit at 1.0902 how much money did we make see if you can calculate how much money we made based on this trade remember a standard lot is 100,000 units of currency and with that 100,000 units of currency on any pairs ending in USD we're making and losing exactly $10. The value of a pip is exactly $10. So let me share with you the equation you need to figure this out. What you need first is the amount of pips. So we're gonna look at the amount of pips, which is 100. We went up 100 pips in this particular case, right? So we have 100 pips times the amount or the value per pip in this situation based on your lot size. So if we use a standard lot of 100,000 units and we know that a standard lot on the Euro dollar is equal to $10 per pip, then we would have our amount of pips times $10 per pip because we're using a standard lot. And that we have to multiply by the amount of standard lots. In this case, we just traded one standard lot. So with this being the case, how much money did we make on this 100 pip move on the euro dollar? Well, the money would translate to 100 times 10 because we're using a standard lot. And with a standard lot, we are making and losing $10 per pip. The value per pip is $10. We only traded one standard lot. So therefore, 100 times 10 is $1,000 is what you made or what we would have made on this 100 pip move out of the euro dollar. Now, 
Let's change things up for a second and say we wanted to trade three standard lots. In this case, what would change? What number in the equation would we need to change if this was the case and we were trading three standard lots instead of one? Well, if that was the case, we would have to change the third number in this equation. We still have a 100 pip move, right? Pips is right here. We still are trading standard lots. So standard lot is right here. Now we need number of lots. So what's the number of lots? Well, we're trading three. So that would mean that this 100 pip move, if you were trading three standard lots, would equal a $3,000 gain. Now let's look at this in a different way that always helped me to better understand what's actually going on whenever I place trades. So let's move back to placing a buy order with one standard lot on the Euro dollar. If you're doing this, essentially, you are telling your broker that you are going to want 100,000 euros. Not 1 million euros, what am I doing? 100,000 euros. So if you're gonna purchase 100,000 euros, your brokerage is going to charge you the exchange rate that the market currently has, which is 1.0802, 100,000 times 1.0802 would be, they will charge you $108,002. So that's what you're being charged to get 100,000 euros. Your broker gives you that 100,000 euros, they get $108,002 from you, from your account. Then you are holding that 100,000 euros waiting on the, market to either rise or fall, waiting on the euro dollar to either rise or fall. In this case, you bought the euros and the market went up from 108.02 to 109.02, meaning that you still have the same 100,000 euros that you are holding, but now instead of them having a value of $108,002, they now have a value because of the difference in the exchange rate, the exchange rate has went up, they now have a value of $109,002. And that's where you're getting that $1,000 if you're trading a standard lot. So that's the way a pip works if you're trading a standard lot. Let's go into the way a pip works if you're trading a mini and a micro lot just to make sure you have a solid grasp on this. We'll keep the math easy with a 100 pip move, except now instead of trading one standard lot, we're going to assume that you, we're gonna do a little bit of a difficult thing here, a little, a little more difficult as we go. Let's assume you wanna trade two mini lots. So you're trading two mini lots, and do you remember what a mini is? A mini is you holding 10,000 units of currency. So if you're trading two minis, you're holding 20,000 units of currency. A mini is worth $1 per pip, meaning the value of a pip, if you're trading a mini lot, is $1. So in this case, the market goes up by 100 pips. So our equation would still be, pips would be 100 times the value per mini lot, per pip when you're trading a mini lot, which is $1 times the amount of mini lots you're trading, which is two, meaning that your, your profit on this trade, if you were trading a mini lot, would be 100 times one, which is 100 times two, which is the amount of mini lots you're trading, so you would have a profit of $200 on this particular trade. Now, let's go through the other way of looking at it on a mini lot as well. What you are saying is, broker, I want 20,000 euros. And they are going to, math is gonna get a little more difficult here, hold on. They're going to charge you, let's bring a calculator over, 1.0802 1, times 20 thousand when they do that they're going to be charging you twenty one thousand six hundred and four dollars so when they're charging you twenty one thousand six hundred and four dollars you're holding twenty thousand units of euro so while you hold that twenty thousand units of euro just as in our last example the euro goes up a hundred pips so you still have that same twenty thousand euros except now you have to multiply that twenty thousand units that you're holding times the new exchange rate of 1.0902, which means when you give them that 20,000 units back, they owe you $21,804, giving you that $200 profit. 
So that's the way profit and loss works in a mini lot. No matter how many it is, we have our equation, right? Pips times the amount per pip, the value per pip times the amount of lots you decide to trade. One more example of this, and then I'm gonna show you how I personally calculate pips and how I use risk management in my own trading. But let's go through this last example first on a micro lot. So let's say you wanna trade one micro lot and you're doing that while the you buy that one micro lot, the market's at 1.0802, just as with the other examples, we go up 100 pips What's our equation look like? Well, we have to do our 100 pips times 10 cents times the amount of micro lots we're trading, which in this case is one. What does that equal? That means that you would have made $10 on this 100 pip move trading one micro lot. So as we do with every other lot size, let's go ahead and look at it in a different way. So you're telling your broker, I want one thousand units of the euro and they're telling you if you want one thousand units of the euro we're going to charge you one thousand and eighty dollars and then you say okay I'm, I'm fine with that you exchange it you hold that one thousand euros until the price rises by a hundred pips and when it does your same one thousand euros is now worth one thousand and ninety dollars because of that rise in price so that's exactly how the value of a pip works when using a certain lot size. Now for my own personal trading, as I said at the beginning of the video, I actually trade based on a certain percentage of my account value. So the, the lot size is always a random number and that's an extremely simple thing to do if you have the right platform. So I'm gonna show you my platform and show you how I actually determine the value per pip myself. This was for anyone using MT4 or a brokerage that doesn't allow you to have random lot sizes. So I hope that was helpful. Let's break into the way I actually prepare, have risk management, the way that I calculate value per pip on my own personal trading right now. Okay, so now let's talk about how I personally calculate the value per pip. And first, let's talk about why you even need all of this information. Why do you need to understand how much every pip is worth depending on the lot size that you're trading? Well, the reason is because of risk management. You want to understand that so that you can know how much of your account you're risking per trade, whatever your stop loss is, and, and also how much you can make per trade. But the more important part of this equation is how much you can lose. So with that being the case, the reason we want to understand the value of the pip is because we want to understand how much we're risking on each trade. With that being the case, the way I use risk management and calculate the value per pip is a lot different than what I just showed you because my brokerage, as we've discussed in the beginning, and my platform allow me to trade completely random unit sizes. So for me, it's a lot easier than having to do any of that math. I learned that at the beginning and I know that's something a lot of you may have to use, but for those of you who have the same brokerage as me or for those of you who have a brokerage that allows you to use random units to place orders, this is what I personally do. I want to share this with you as well. So all I do, if I want to place a trade, let's say I wanted to buy the, Euro, the New Zealand dollar right now, which is the currency pair we're on, I would go to create a new order, I would have a market order in, and I would set my stop loss. And let's do this first. Let's go ahead and do, say I want to buy the New Zealand dollar right now. I want to have a stop loss below this red candle. So that's my stop loss, and I have a target at a two to one risk reward. So if this is the case, I now have my trade set up. So what I'll do is go to trade, create new order. It's gonna be a buy order on the New Zealand dollar. And I know where my stop loss is. It's at 100 pips. So 100 pips is my stop loss. I know my target's at 200 pips around a two to one risk reward. With this being the case, my units for me are completely irrelevant. And this is the reason. I'm trading based on a certain risk of my account with every position that I take out. The certain risk for me is between one and 2%. So for me, the easy way that I do this is I go here to trading view, I place my order and I put in what amount of risk I wanna use. As you can see right here on the order form, it says percent risk. When I put in 2% risk, you can see that it shows me the size in units that I'm actually purchasing. And this number is completely random. Again, some brokerages may only allow you to place trades based on standard lots. In that case, you would need to trade two standard lots and it would be completely different for you. But for the way I trade for my brokerage and my platform, 
I'm allowed to trade based on a certain percentage of my account value, which is what I like to do for every trade I place. Therefore, the lesson we just went over is kind of irrelevant for me at this point in my trading, considering the technology that I use here over on the TradingView platform in order to determine the amount of risk I'm gonna use in my personal trading account with every trade that I place. So I wanted to give you both of those so that you now at least understand how to calculate the value of a pip based on your order size. And also you know now that you can go over to TradingView and you can see the amount of units you need to purchase based on the percentage risk of your account. We're gonna go over a lot more of that later on in the course in terms of how to calculate risk per position and things like that's gonna be later on. Right now I just want you to understand how to calculate the value of a pip and I wanted to show you how I personally calculate the value of a pip. Later on and in the next lesson, we are going over what leverage really means. So in that video, in the next video, we're gonna talk a lot about leverage. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you got value out of it. Hopefully now you understand exactly how to calculate the value of a pip and I'll talk to you in the next video. See you soon. What's up and welcome to lesson number four in our all inclusive beginner Forex trading course that is going to be everything that you need in order to start your Forex trading journey. This video, you read it right folks, is all about leverage. So by the end of this video, you're not only going to know what leverage is, but you're also going to understand why a lot of traders end up blowing accounts because of it, how to avoid that and the proper way to actually use leverage by the end of the video. So let's go ahead and get started with what is leverage. And the way we're going to do that is by using an example of the housing market. So let's go ahead and get started with that right now. Let's say, by the way, in the housing market, when you want to get a loan for a house, you actually need 20% down on that property in order to purchase that property. So let's say you find a property that you want to invest in, and this property is $100,000. In the case of this property, be, property being $100,000, how much do you need to deposit how much of a down payment do you need in order to buy this house or invest in this house? You need $20,000, right? So let's say you come across the greatest bank in the world and they come up to you and they say, hey, we know you want this property. What we're going to do is we're going to take your $20,000 and we're going to give you this $100,000 piece of property. You can hold it as long as you want. You don't have to make any payments on this property, but when you decide to sell it, you still owe us $100,000. So that means if the market crashes and this house's property drops like crazy, you still owe us $100,000 whenever you decide to sell. And if the housing market goes up, vice versa, you still owe us $100,000. So let's do this scenario. Let's say you say, okay, yeah, great deal. That is an amazing deal. So let's do it and you buy this $100,000 property with a $20,000 down payment and you have no payments. And then throughout the course of 12 months, the housing market drops 50%. Oh no, right? So now your property that was worth $100,000 is now only worth $50,000. But guess what? That bank already told you whether the market goes up or down, you owe us our $100,000 back. So in this case, you decide to sell for a loss. How much did you lose on this house? You lost that $50,000. That sucks, right? So this is the power of leverage in terms of how it can hurt you. You lost more than your initial down payment, more than your deposit, maybe more than you had if $20,000 is all you had to invest. Is this sounding familiar? Kind of like leverage in the Forex market? and some of the horror stories you've heard. So that's how leverage can hurt you, right? And in terms of helping you, we can do this other scenario because guess what? Just as bad as it can hurt you, it can help you make ridiculous returns as well when you use it correctly. So let's say the same scenario, you pay $20,000. They say, here's this $100,000 property to hold. This time, instead of the market dropping by 50%, we go up. 50% over the next 12 months. So with the housing market going up 50%, you now have this property that was worth a hundred grand that is now worth $150,000. And guess what? The bank says the same thing. Whenever you sell at that 12 month period, the bank says, okay, you've sold 
you owe us 100k. In that case, you give them their 100k back and you end up with a plus $50,000 profit. So in this case, you made more than your initial down payment. That is the power of leverage. Leverage can allow you to make ridiculous returns and also, unfortunately, can cause you to lose even more than you initially invested. Now, Forex is a little different because there's a thing called margin call, but now that you know what leverage is, let's relate it back over to Forex. And by the way, this bank, the $20,000, and it will let you hold a 100K property, is the broker. So let's jump into an actual Forex scenario with this being the case. Let's go ahead and delete all of this. So in Forex, I'm gonna draw out a little graph here. We have about four different types of major leverage that people or brokers allow you to have. And we have one to 10 leverage, one to 20, one to 50, and one to 100 leverage. Now, each of these means that you have your account times the leverage you get in buying power. So let's say you have a $1,000 account. Just to make math super simple, that means with one to 10 leverage, you have 10K buying power. One to 20, you have 20K buying power. This is self-explanatory, but I'm gonna write it down anyway. 50K buying power at one to 50 and 100K buying power at one to 100. Now here is the reason most traders blow their entire accounts using leverage. Most traders say I have a thousand dollar account, but, but I have 10 K in buying power. So what do I need to do? Obviously I need to buy 10,000 units of the Euro dollar and hope that that shit goes up. That's not how you want to use leverage. That is the worst way to use leverage. And let me help you understand why we're going to use $1,000 account size as an example. And we're going to use the 50 to one leverage because in the United States, that is the maximum amount of leverage they allow you to have. And personally, 50 to one leverage is what I use. So with a $1,000 account, let's look at this as if you don't have any leverage. You have a $1,000 account. We've talked about order sizes, right? How many units can you purchase with a $1,000 account and no leverage at all? 1,000 units, right? Self-explanatory. 1,000 units. What is 1,000 units? That is a micro lot. One micro lot on most pairs means that you are the value of a pip for your position. Stay with me. If you haven't studied lot sizes and stuff, we have another video on that that you've probably just watched, hopefully. This 1,000 unit micro lot is worth 10 cents per pip. Okay, so if you have a $1,000 account, that means you can trade at maximum. If you are all in on a trade, you can have 1,000 units of a currency. Let's say you have 1,000 units of the Euro dollar. And you say, cool, I have 1,000 units. These, This micro lot means that every pip the Euro dollar moves is 10 cents per pip. In this case, I want you to look at risk as how many pips you can lose. How many pips could you lose at 10 cents a pip if you have a $1,000 account and no leverage? You could lose 10,000 pips before you blow your account. That's awesome. It, this is why not using leverage at the beginning is a pretty good idea. If you're just now starting out, you're gonna have a lot of losses, but if you have 10,000 pips of room before you blow your account, then you would have to lose a lot of trades to actually blow your account. Here's where leverage actually can really hurt you because let's take this same, same $1,000. And we'll actually keep all of this on the screen. We have this $1,000. Sorry if it gets a little messy here, guys. I'll color this a different color to make it a little bit easier. Let's go with blue. I like blue. So we have this $1,000 account, but now, separate this. Now you have your $1,000 account with a 50 to one leverage, which means you have $50,000 in buying power. Now here's what you need to understand. The brokerage is not gonna let you lose 50 grand. Before you lose the one grand that you have, they are going to do something called margin call. This number, your capital, is called margin. 50 to one on leverage means that you have, for every $1 of margin, you have $50 that you can put into a position. 
So in this case, let's say you maxed it out and you said, I have 50,000 units to trade, the guy that we were talking about on the Euro dollar, right? I got my 50,000 units. Let me just buy the Euro dollar right now. So you buy Euro USD, same example. And with this Euro USD trade, you have spent your full 50,000 units. What is 50,000 units? Remember 10,000 units is a mini lot. And a mini lot has a value per pip of $1. So if we have five mini lots, how much is our value per pip on this trade? Our value per pip, which we're going to label with VPP on our Euro dollar trade is $5. You see the difference here? This was 10 cents per pip. But because we're using leverage over here, we have $5 per pip. Now, can this work for you? Absolutely. Yeah, you can make a lot more money at $5 per pip than at 10 cents per pip. No one is doubting that. I'm not saying you can't do that. But as a beginner, do you think it's more likely you're going to hit home runs or swing and miss most of the time? Swing and miss, you're right. A lot of times as beginners, you're expected to lose, right? So it's okay to lose. But if you have your entire account balance, your $1,000 in margin, which gives you $50,000 in buying power on this position, how many pips do you have that you can lose before your account goes to absolutely zero? Where it was 10,000 pips, now the math we have to do is your $5 per pip and your account balance. So now what we need to do is take your account balance of $1,000 because again, they're not going to allow you to lose more than $1,000. And if you're risking $5 per pip, that means you, divided by $5, let's do this, let's finish the math, that means you only have 200 pips. Because 200 times 5 is $1,000. That takes your count away. So instead of 10,000 pips of risk, the reason most traders blow their accounts using leverage is because they only have 200 pips of risk. And guess what? you don't really have 200 pips of risk because they are going to margin call. This is the weirdest looking pen. Let me, let me change that, sorry. Margin call you at somewhere around 80 to 90%. So instead of 200 pips, it's more like you have about 160 pips, maybe 170 pips of risk before you get a margin call, which is when they take all of your trades away and you're left with a balance of about 10% of your original capital. So you would be left with a $100 account after 160 pips of movement out of the Euro dollar if you just had one wrong guess. So let's say you do this and you guess wrong on the Euro dollar and you're new so you don't understand stop losses and the Euro dollar moves at 160 pips, which is doing multiple times every day at this point because the volatility we're seeing in the market, you could lose your whole account balance in one day doing this. That's what, that's the danger and the reason that most beginners using leverage end up blowing their account before they have a chance to make any money at all. That's the danger of leverage and that's what you need to understand. And there's a correct way to use leverage as well. This would be the wrong way to use leverage. You don't want to max out. You don't want to max out and be trading with leverage and trading your entire account value because that gives you a very small margin of error. Again, we're talking about that 200 pips is all you have, probably closer to about 160. So if you only have 200 pips that you can lose, that's a pretty easy amount to lose. It's easy to lose 200 pips. And in a day, in the way the markets are moving right now, again, the danger of leverage is that you have way less risk that way, way less pips you can lose before you blow your entire account 200 against the 10,000 with no leverage at all. So that's the wrong way to use leverage. What's the proper way to use leverage? That's how you blow an account using leverage. How do you use leverage to your advantage to actually make more than your initial deposit? Let's go over that right now. So here is the proper way to use leverage. One, Lesson number one, always use a stop loss if you're using a leveraged account. If you're not, you're putting yourself in this ridiculous risky situation. And as traders, avoiding risk is half the battle. So always, and I mean always, use a stop loss with leverage. But let's talk about the power of leverage and what it can actually help you do. Same scenario we've been discussing. $1,000 account. 
with 50 to 1 leverage. So if you have a $1,000 account and 50 to 1 leverage, what's the correct way of using that leverage? Well, it's first to decide what your risk management plan is going to be. How much are you going to risk per trade? For me, and only for me, I'm not suggesting anything to you. This is for entertainment. I hope you're entertained. For me, I risk between 1% and 2% of my total account balance per trade. So in this case, that would be $10 to $20. Let's keep it simple with $10. So if I want to risk $10, let's say I want to risk 2% of this, which is $10 on a trade, I need to know the amount of pips I'm going to lose or could possibly lose in order to create this $10 loss. And how do we do that? Well, let's say that we have a 100 pip stop loss, okay? The Euro dollar 100 pip trade, the same one we've been discussing during the entire video. So this Euro USD trade has a maximum loss of 100 pips. Now, in order to create this scenario where I'm possibly losing $10 on a 100 pip loss, I have to figure out my price per pip in terms of the 100 pip stop loss. And the way you do that is with an equ equation. The equation is the amount of dollars you want to risk, which is $10. I don't know why I put percent right there, $10. And this $10 has to be divided by the amount of pips we're going to lose. $10 divided by 100 pips equals 10 cents per pip. This is where it gets a little bit easier. Now we know that we need a value of 10 cents per pip on this trade. Why? Because we have a 100 pip stop loss and I want to risk 1% of my account, which means I need 10 cents per pip times that 100 to give me that $10 risk. With 10 cents per pip, we've talked about this already, that means you need one micro lot. Now, one micro lot would cost you $1,000 because you are controlling 1,000 units of currency with a micro lot. So, if you had no margin, this would be your entire account. But with margin, the power of margin and the way to use it correctly after you have all of this calculated, you know your stop loss is putting you at a $10 risk, which is 1% of your account value, your one micro lot that would cost you $1,000 no longer cost you $1,000. Now it's coming out of something called margin, which is your capital. So you have this full capital of margin that they are giving you 50 to one on. This full capital of margin means you're getting $50 for every $1 you invest into a position. So if I'm investing $1,000 into a position, what do I have to do? I have to divide that $1,000 by my 50 to 1 leverage, which gives me $20. What this means is that instead of costing me my full account of $1,000 in order to place this trade, instead of $1,000, this now only cost me $20. So instead of $1,000 on this trade, I've only had to put up the deposit of $20. So this is like the bank in the beginning of this video, the scenario we talked about houses. This is a very similar situation. You're giving your broker 20 bucks. They're saying, here's a thousand units. You hold on to that thousand units as long as you want. But when you decide to sell that thousand units, we want that thousand dollars back, no matter what. If, if your investment goes up or down, we want that thousand units back. So when this investment goes up, you make money, but if it goes down, you still owe them a thousand bucks. But instead of losing a thousand dollars, you've only lost ten dollars. And here's that math. So this is going to be very familiar math. We're looking at euro. This is the actual trade itself. This is what it looks like euro and dollars. What you said is, I want 1,000 euros. Let, let's do the price of the euro dollar right now. Price of the euro dollar right now is 1.1042. You said, I want 1,000 euros. This is the actual trade, what it looks like in your brokerage. I want 1,000 units of euro. And they said, okay, in order to give you 1,000 units of euro, the exchange rate right now is 1.1042. They say, okay, if you want 1,000 euros, we're going to need $1,104 from you. But then the bank goes, I've got you at a 50 
or the broker to one leverage, which means we really only need $20 on margin for you to do this because your $20 is equal to a thousand units. So you say, cool, here's my $20, hold on to it. I'll hold this thousand units until the price fluctuates either up or down. You still have your same 1,000 units of Euro, but now let's say the price drops from the Euro from 1.1042, we have a decrease in value down to 1.0942, which would be a drop of 100 pips, which is what our stop loss was set at. So when it drops down to 1.0942, your stop loss gets hit and you say, here's your 1,000 euros back. But now the exchange rate is lower. So even though your investment dropped in value, they still expect that same 1,000 euros. In order to give them 1,000 euros, you now have to hand them 1,000 in $94. So therefore, because of that, your investment dropped $10. And that's the actual math on this specific trade. Now in the other scenario, let's say that the market goes up uh, 200 pips. Let's say you had a two to one risk reward. So let's delete this and do the math on this as well. To make sure you fully comprehend leverage, this is going to be extremely helpful. Let's say you had a two to one risk reward on this trade. So instead of going down 100 pips, now we go to 1.1242, or we rose by 200 pips, a two to one risk reward. So now your bank said $20 and we'll let you hold 1,000 euros at the price of 1.1042 or $1,104 and we'll let you hold this thousand euros as long as you want, as long as whenever you pay us back, you give us that same 1,000 euro value. So we say, okay, cool. But this time the euro dollar goes up by 200 pips. So now instead of your investment being worth $1,104, your investment is now worth $1,124 meaning that instead of losing $10, your investment actually went up $20. And the power of having leverage means that instead of spending, remember, in order to get this position size, originally, you would have had to spend your entire $1,000 account. But instead of having to spend your entire $1,000 account to make this $20 over here, you now have made $20 on an initial $20 investment because of the power of leverage. So you've made a 100% gain on this specific trade because you have leverage to the point you only spent $20 of your actual capital in order to make $20 on the other side of that. So that is the power of leverage and the way of using it correctly. So what does leverage really allow us to do? In a nutshell, if you use leverage correctly, it's not going to allow you to trade with this massive size and risk all this money and essentially gamble. It doesn't allow you to get rich in three days. It doesn't allow you to triple your account this week. Leverage allows you to be in more trades at one time and to put an initial deposit down of a small amount in order to purchase a larger position when you have a stop loss. The stop loss is so important. When you have a set risk management plan, if you have that set risk management plan, you have a $1,000 account and you're doing risk management correctly, you're only risking $10 per trade, leverage just allows you to be in more trades. As long as you have this $10 risk, it's okay to be in a bunch of trades. You can be in 20 trades and you're still only risking 200 bucks. So you're not at all putting your account in jeopardy as long as you have this risk management in place. So that's how you combine risk management with leverage. And that's the only way you should be using leverage. I hope this video has taught you everything you need to know about leverage. I know it was a long one, but leverage is a kind of a complicated subject that takes a while to understand. If you had any doubts or for any reason are confused about leverage, I would suggest going back and watching this one more time. You will be surprised at the amount of stuff you pick up on. Again, hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next video. Don't over leverage and don't risk it all. All right, so I really hope you enjoyed that beginner lesson, but if you are ready for some more advanced training, then we just had a few graduates come out of the EAP training program, our flagship program here at the Trading Channel. I'll post some of their testimonials on the screen. And that is incredible news for them 
And that's also incredible news for you because that means that we finally have some spots available in the EAP training program. And while you glance through some of the comments on the screen, I want to tell you that if you're struggling to profit right now, then I've been where you are too. I struggled for over a year before I found a way to be consistently profitable. I made every mistake you can think of. I moved stops. I used poor risk management. I traded strategies that didn't work. I followed a signal service that ended up with me almost blowing my entire account. But after that first year, and after nearly blowing an entire account, I found the real path to trading success. And consistently profitable trading became as easy as counting to six. And that is what I teach in the EAP training program. I created a strategy that only uses six simple rules to create an edge over the market. So once you memorize these rules, trading becomes as easy as counting to six. These rules are completely objective and easy to follow. And although just having a strategy is only one part of the equation, it is a very large part of that equation. In the EAP training program, we also have lessons on risk management and discipline to make sure that you have everything you need to get on the right track to becoming a consistently profitable trader. And here's a look at some of the things that are included in the course. As you can see, we have beginner lessons that teach you everything you need to know about technical analysis in terms of what you're going to learn in the course. We have a transition course, which is meant to take you from where you are to becoming consistently profitable. And after that, we have an advanced course that is meant to take your trading to that next level. We also send out three to five email alerts every week. These are not meant as signals. Let me clarify that. But instead, meant to show you exactly how I am looking at the market. And we also do a review video at the end of every couple of weeks to show you how the strategies are performing. And you can check those out right here. So if more advanced training is something that you are looking for, then we do have a few spots available in the EAP training program. This program also comes with priority email, meaning you can email me at any point that you have questions and I will answer you ASAP. So if a trading mentor is something you are looking for, then look no further. Go ahead and click the link in the description for the EAP training program and it would be a pleasure to have you aboard and to have you join us in the EAP training program. If not, that's totally fine too. Make sure you're subscribed here on YouTube. Make sure to click that like button for me if you enjoyed this video. Follow us on Instagram at The Trading Channel and I will see you in the next video.